well, thank you all so much for coming today. My name is Kevin Schilling. I'm the mayor of the city of Burien, and beside me are uh, other council members as well as numerous business owners in the city who have spent years and years uh, investing uh, their time, sweat, treasure, talent in making this community what it is. Uh, I grew up here. Uh, my family lives here. We care deeply about this community. And our message is simple today, and it's that we need to get to the table and find a pathway that meets the needs of the city of Burien, uh, that works to get folks off the streets and into shelter and services, and that meets the goals of providing those services regardless of who that person is or what's going on. Because right now the situation is untenable and we are locked in this back and forth with the sheriff where we have requested and been denied essentially sitting down with them to figure out a way to bring ourselves uh, in accordance with a, with a collaboration that can work to address the needs of the city through, and address the needs of the people who are on the street. So a couple things to say before I'll uh, hand it over to some business owners to tell some stories about what has been happening on the ground right now. So the Burien City Council is a duly elected, democratically elected body that enacts ordinances and laws to protect all the city of Burien. By telling the city of Burien what we can and cannot do, King County, the sheriff's office, is usurping authority and involving themselves in internal affairs with what we have been elected to decide for the city of Burien. In doing so, there has been breaking of the agreement between our government and the sheriff's office to ensure enforcement and an action of laws. We are, we are in a place where we need to sit down with the sheriff and the sheriff needs to do that through the processes of the oversight committee of the King County Sheriff's Office within the interlocal agreement. And we need that to happen now because if we have continuing attempts to try to go around that process and to make it hard for us to reach agreement, we're gonna to continue to see a growth of tense a growth and increase of overdose deaths and a lack of services that people are being connected to. And that could all stop today if the sheriff works with us to enact and continue to enforce the parts of the ordinance that has been in place from day one that they have enforced for months prior to this moment. And that is up to them to decide. We have, told, we have not told them to stop doing that. We have requested again and again and again for them to just go back and enforce the parts of the ordinance that are already in place that would work to ensure people can get off the street and into shelter and services, no matter where those are. And we're calling today the businesses beside me and the community that the sheriff and King County actually sit down with us through the process that's in place to ensure that's going to happen. So in order to in order to support that effort, I'm going to bring up a couple business owners here. First, we're going to have Monty with Discover Burien uh, speak. He is the board president of Discover Burien. Impacting the homeless or having on Burien businesses is continuing day by day businesses with customers and a challenge to businesses. We need as leaders to work together to solve the issue. Homeless issues that is continuing to grow in Burien. As homeless camps increase in the downtown poor area, so does the safety of staff, patrons of Burien businesses. Having homeless on 153rd Street on the sidewalks is a safety issue for patrons and students walking their way to work, excuse me, to school based on a day-to-day -day basis. It's time for government, I say government, to start working together as adults in the room, solving the homeless issue can't miss issue in Burien as a group and stop wasting taxpayer dollars. I emphasize working together as a group. That's what everybody should be doing. Coming together, meeting in a room, talking the issues out, 
and solving the issue. It's not a hard issue. It's an issue that I'm sure we can all handle if we sit down together and talk. Thank you. Next, we are bringing up uh, Jackie, who is a member of the Latino Civic Alliance. I'm going to say my uh, statement in Spanish. And then if you guys like a copy, then I can uh, be happy to hand you one. Soy Jackie Lomeli. Me han pedido que represente a Latino Civic Alliance, una organización sin fines de lucro que aboga por los derechos de la comunidad latina en todo el estado. Queremos agradecer al alcalde Schilling y a los miembros del consejo de, y a nuestro gerente de la ciudad, Adolfo Bailón, por su liderazgo en responder a las preocupaciones de seguridad pública en el centro de Vibre y otras áreas. Nuestra oficina se encuentra en el 445 Southwest 152nd Street, Downtown Vibre, Washington. Ofrecemos servicios de asistencia técnica para pequeñas empresas, desarrollo de fuerza laboral, programación de aprendizaje. Nuestro centro cívico y cultural latino también está ubicado en la calle 152. Y por último, ofrecemos servicios para jóvenes y familias. Desafortunadamente, hoy en día estamos con, con otros propietarios de negocios que abordan la preocupación por la seguridad pública que afecta significativamente a nuestros negocios locales, incluyendo a LCA y el bienestar general de nuestros residentes en el centro y la comunidad. LCA ha tenido que tomar medidas extremas para proteger a nuestro personal ubicado en nuestro edificio. Hace poco entraron en el patio trasero que está cerrado. Encontramos un gran número de restos de consumo de drogas, una estufa de exterior hecha a sí misma con más de 50 láminas utilizadas para calentar sustancias y tuberías de droga. Esto es extremadamente peligroso y podía haber causado un incendio que lesione a todo el personal y a los vecinos del espacio comercial en el mismo edificio. Además que la gente estuviera realmente en nuestra propiedad cerrada da miedo. Hemos tenido que cambiar los horarios de los negocios y tomar precauciones del personal y la familia. Nos han informado que tienen miedo de ir al centro cívico y cultural. Es crucial que, la policía, que los policías y consejeros de salud mental aborden los, de, los complejos desafíos a los que enfrentan las personas que luchan por la salud mental y la adicción a las drogas y los comportamientos violentos. Estamos pidiendo que el sheriff del condado y los, y los funcionarios electos del condado apoyen a la ciudad de Buren y a nuestros negocios y actúen ahora. Las pequeñas empresas trabajan muy duro y el impacto financiero debido a las preocupaciones de seguridad pública es real. Merecemos no ser ignorados. Estamos en peligro de perder pequeñas empresas y estamos informando, nos han informado de que tendrán que cerrar su negocio o mudarse a otra ciudad. Juntos podemos, una, podemos crear una comunidad más segura y próspera para todos los residentes de Fiorent. Gracias. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, we are now bringing up Hector Ramos from La Costa <coughs> Restaurant on 152nd. Hola amigos, this is very serious uh, for me. I'm not in the city, no. Hector Ramos from La Costa. I'm usually the uh, welcome to the restaurant, Margarita Fajita guy. Uh, now it becomes somebody I just really don't uh, like anymore at this point. It's been a couple of months where I've become not a happy guy. I haven't slept well, I haven't been with my family. I've had to try to smile, I've had to try to uh, uh, be what usually comes naturally. So I'm a little disappointed in myself because it's just, uh, uh, it's hard dealing with what we have to deal with every day. Uh, here in front of the, the center, over here in La Costa, uh, I spent from 6 a.m. to about 2 a.m. Uh, studying the situation, understanding what was in front of me. Uh, all I saw was drug use, all I saw was defecation, all I saw was uh, continuous sales. Uh, sorry to tell the story. Three different drug shifts from, uh, from 10 to 2 in the morning. Uh, it's just a constant. Uh, it just got to a point where I just didn't know what to do. Uh, I understand the difficulty between the governments and the powers that be. Uh, and I've become this nervous guy trying to put a gate here, put a fence there, light here. And it's just been, it's been crazy. But seeing and experiencing what's happening right in front of your home, your business, where your family is, my sisters, my uh, nieces, my nephews, my aunts and uncles, uh, it's it's a second home for us, if not a first home, uh, and I'm just not going to allow that to happen. There's just, just no way. Uh, so uh, having to become the person that I've, I've had to become, uh, it, it wasn't easy, but uh, <clears throat> it, it was necessary. So, but also with the help, I have to say, uh, with with Chief uh, uh, Ted Bow and Sergeant Henry and, and Mark Hayden, I'm not sure what his uh, full title is, but uh, we've become very uh, very close. They've come out, they've supported, they've helped with all their limitations. 
but at this point, I will not stop. I will continue to uh, uh, protect my family, my business, and my community. I've been here for, lived here for 45 years, and will continue to do so. Uh, my whole family has prospered here. Uh, love this place. Do not like what's happening, and my community and my family will have my utmost support, and I will continue and be relentless. Uh, and I hope just to become the guy that smiles at you at La Costa to serve you a margarita and a fajita. But for the time being, this is where I need to be, and thank you for your time. Hi guys, uh, my name is Daniel Sullivan. I'm with the, well, I'm a vendor, a farmer at the Bering Farmer's Market. We've been at the market for 12, 15 years, something like that. So we've really ingrained ourselves in this community. We've got extended family here. It's really been a, a wonderful experience to be part of Bering. At the level that we are over the past couple of uh, over a decade, really, I would, you know, we're here talking about this problem today, and it's really, really severe, and um, we kind of see it firsthand when we come out in the mornings, and um, you know, the message that I have, first and foremost, is just for unity between the powers that be, the, the sheriff, and the city government to come together to fix this, because it's. It's really unsafe. Um, I think five weeks ago, just over a month ago, uh, we had to wait to set up our tent over here, our booth at the farmer's market, because they had a, a, there was a overdose fatality. And that's insane. I've never even, you know, that's, that's hard to process. It's hard to process for the crew. It's hard to process for me. There's been, um, you know, a, a couple of those in, in recent weeks. And it's just devastating. It's not safe for kids to walk through. We've got to do needle sweeps. No one wants to do this stuff. I mean, it's just that the whole thing is tragic all the way around. But um, you know, the human waste, the needle sweeps, the fatalities, it just creates for a, a, an unpleasant environment for the community. It takes away from the family dynamic of the library, of, of uh, the market, and all the things that we are working so hard to preserve here. So everyone's efforts matter, and these folks out here matter, but I would really, really urge the sheriff's office to come to the table and fix this for all of our sakes. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Zielinski. I own Sitka Living with my business partner, Lori Glenn. We are a home decor and furniture store and share retail space with Glass Expressions, a stained glass studio. We are heavily involved with our community as members of Discover Burien and the South Seattle Chamber of Commerce, as well as providing retail space for over 20 different local artists to feature their goods. We are 100% women-owned, like the majority of local businesses here in Burien. We opened just five years ago in 2019 and survived the economic shutdowns during COVID. It's chaotic economic aftermath, and now find ourselves in a historic election year, which always affects businesses. Yet. In all these five years, we haven't experienced the magnitude of such an income shortfall as we have these last four months. While we understand the complexity of balancing the needs of the homeless with the needs of our citizens, we business owners feel ignored when it comes to the safety and security of our customers and businesses while the King County Sheriff's Department and Burien City Council have been struggling to compromise. This standoff has lasted far too long and puts many owners at risk of closing their doors. That damage is irreversible. The longer this goes on, the longer the spotlight the media is putting on our city. That constant negative attention also has a severe impact on consumers, dining and shopping in Burien. The health of our economy is critical and at a pivotal point, a breaking point. This should be the priority of the Sheriff Department and City Council. We implore you to enforce the daytime camping ordinance as you did before. Homelessness isn't just a crisis for the homeless, it's a crisis for our economy. As a woman business owner, I have felt threatened several times. I've had to ask a man with a machete, to leave our business, had, uh, had a man lurch at me with a piece of rebar. I've had men exposing themselves to me. What is it going to take before you concede and agree? This does not need to be a battle. The greatest victory would be to do so without one. Quoting Francis Hasselbein, culture does not change because we desire to change it. Culture changes when the organization is transformed. The culture reflects the realities of people working together every day. Every day matters, and every day this goes on without compromise is another day closer for a business to close. We need to stop enabling the homeless problem. We need to set boundaries. It's undeniable people do not change by enabling them.
people only understand the boundaries of law. There needs to have to be a balance that shelters are forgotten businesses in our community and their citizens. We need to run our business without fear. That is the moral and ethical responsibility of our law enforcement and elected officials. If we keep treading water, we will surely drown. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you've heard today uh, the community requests the King County Sheriff's Office to actually come to the table and sit down with the city government to address these concerns in the process within the Oversight Committee and within our interlocal agreement. Um, we urge that to happen as soon as possible, if not immediately. And we are willing and have been willing to do that. Uh, it is up to the sheriff and the sheriff's office to come to the table with us because we need to find a pathway towards enforcement of uh, time, manner, and place restrictions around uh, tent encampments, like we have been working on them for months, but also finding ways to continue to uh, expand and work on our service outreach and getting folks off the street into shelter and services. Uh, which is the ultimate goal for everybody. Mayor, question, uh, Jeremy with Como. So you, you make, there's two pending federal cases here with motions that are due as early as next week. It sounds like you want to handle this outside of the pending federal cases, come back to the table and, and decide on the camping ordinance, which is the subject of a federal lawsuit. I mean, are you looking to resolve this outside of federal court? I think the fastest way to resolve this is through the process that is within our interlocal agreement and the King County Sheriff's Oversight Committee that could have started with it, instead of them suing us. So that could have been a process that started months ago. Um, my personal wish is for them to drop the lawsuit and to go through the interlocal agreement and the King County Sheriff's Office uh, process. That would be best for everybody. And do you think that's realistic though? I mean, could, they've given no indication that they will drop that federal lawsuit. That's why they filed it. I mean, is it realistic to say, let's just set aside these two pending federal lawsuits and come back to basically where we were a few months ago? I think you gotta ask, and I think you gotta stand with a group of people from your community and say, we need you to do this. This is, this is serious. It's serious for the community. It's serious for people who are on the street. And it's serious to ensure that the city of Beering can continue to thrive. Talk about the letter that the sheriff issued uh, on Tuesday. I'm gonna read one line from it. She says that city council can correct their action by readopting the previous constitutional camping ordinance. What do you think about that and the rest of the letter? Yeah, there's no such thing as readopting an ordinance that's already in place. The ordinance is in place. It is the King County Sheriff's Office's stated goal to not enforce any part of the ordinance and they're choosing to do that. There has been no judge or there's been no judge order calling our ordinance unconstitutional. It has just been the sheriff's office and the county executive saying it is without any kind of legal uh, support for that statement. So the King County Sheriff's Office can go and enforce any part of the ordinance that we have in place. We don't need to readopt anything. It's in place. It exists. It's them choosing not to enforce anything. And while we're at it, they're also not enforcing ADA requirements along the library and the sidewalk, which is a huge concern for us. Um, they stated in that letter that that's the duty of uh, city code enforcement, but certainly it's also the duty of local law enforcement to ensure that sidewalks are accessible for everybody, especially the disabled. And along those lines, Mayor, excuse me, about, um, it, well, you've heard from other businesses, drug dealing, I mean, people coming into businesses with machetes, which would be obvious trespassing. Are you alleging that the sheriff's office is failing to enforce basic laws totally outside of the camping ordinance? Why don't we have a business owner speak to uh, the, the experience they've had with you? Sorry, I actually had somebody that came to my business with a machete and a pipe. So when I hear the story behind me, he said, this has happened to me as well. This guy was chasing, he was obviously homeless, chasing another homeless person. She was trying to unlock cars, so he was following her. You know, that's really concerning as a business owner. When somebody comes up to you with machete this long, with a pipe this long, and they're walking towards you. It was, it was in the afternoon, probably six o'clock on a Sunday night. And you know, you kind of have to stop and go, this should not be happening anywhere in America, especially in downtown Burien. And calling 911, getting the police to come out to do anything is even getting a hold of somebody to talk to at 911 is a major effort. And I think that that issue plus somebody actually understanding the homeless problem and addressing it before somebody actually gets hurt on the street of Burien and then they address it after that. Do we really want to be that town that somebody dies in the street because nobody wanted to handle the issue? 
the sheriff department needs to come to the table and talk because that is going to be on them if something happens. Mayor, uh, King County Executive Dow Constantine ultimately has oversight of the sheriff's office. What is his responsibility in all of this, and what would you like to say to him? What do you want him to do? I'll just uh, one thing to follow up on on the comment around um, enforcement of certain laws. We've seen some issues around non enforcement of drug laws as well in the city, um, especially around uh, laws that are got, governed by the Blake Fix and. Uh, and enforcing those laws. And so we've certainly seen those not be enforced fully. Um, and every community deserves all laws to be enforced. And we can't, we can't be a community that has pick and choose law enforcement. That doesn't work for anybody, especially when it's uh, picked and chosen by an, unele an unelected official. So to speak to that point, um, I could ask the question again. Dow Constantine has oversight of the sheriff's office. What is his role in all of this, and what do you want him to do? Well, voters in King County got rid of their right to elect a sheriff a few years ago, and I think we're seeing the uh, immediate ramifications of that. Uh, the sheriff is now an appointed uh, official of the county government, headed by the executive, and the executive's Dow Constantine. And certainly we've seen from the beginning of this, the executive's office um, try to influence what's going on. We've had emails from the communications director. We've had emails from the deputy executive. So it's kind of this... It's kind of this mixed match of when the executive's office has wanted to get involved versus when it's just the sheriff. So we don't really know to what degree um, the executive's office is at play here. We certainly understand it to be somewhat at play because the executive chooses the sheriff and has direct control over the sheriff's office. So um, as far as I'm concerned, when I'm communicating with the sheriff, I'm essentially communicating with the county executive. And similarly for anybody who's talking to the sheriff. So do you believe this is Dow Constantine's responsibility as well? Well, certainly. I mean, he's been, he's been uh, county executive since 2009. I think any, anything that's under the purview of the county government, especially when it is in, in accordance with public health, housing, safety, uh, it's the responsibility of the county executive. And I think for too long, voters in King County have not uh, directly expressed concerns with the direction of the county directly to the person who's in charge of the government, specifically around safety, drug overdoses, and housing. And we've seen continuous years of drug overdoses reaching historic levels. Uh, we've, already, we've already had 337 drug overdoses in King County this year alone. It's on track to be another record year. And I think the county executive and county officials really need to step up and understand this to be the severe risk we're in right now for drug overdoses and act accordingly. Mayor, have you spoken directly to the sheriff or Constantine? Or has the city manager spoken? I have not spoken directly to the executive's office about this. We have been in constant communication with the sheriff and the sheriff's office about what's going on and what we need to have happen. So yeah, there's been communications between the city staff and city council members in the sheriff's office, but none with none with the county executive. Earlier, you said that uh, reverting to ordinance, I believe, 827 from 832 would not work. Could you elaborate on that? Well, I guess, I, so just a primer on the process here. There's no such thing as reverting back. The ordinance already exists. So you don't need to revert back to something that is already in existence um, and is enforceable by the sheriff's office. So whenever the sheriff is saying revert back or readopt, there's not an understanding of how the lawmaking process works at our city level because you don't need to readopt something that's already in place. It's up to the it's up to the folks who enforce that law to just enforce it when they want to. Okay. Not when they want to, when they have to. 